Well, the first thing I do is I make a pattern of the fish on craft paper. Um, uh, if it's a world record, I try to get a lot of caliper measurements, you know, in millimeters so that I have it really pretty close to the, its exact size. And I lay the fish on the craft paper and I do the side pattern and then I stand it up so that I do it, you know, up and down. I don't know what that's called, lateral, mm -hmm. a lateral pattern. That little one down there with the, the smaller chunky one, the second one, yeah, the, the, bo the bottom one, that's sort of the, what I like. You know, it's sort of a natural, very natural. Its head is kicked out a little bit. It's, you know, it's got a little bit of an S shape to it because that's how a fish swims. So anyway, I do the pattern. I do a, a, you know, a laying down pattern, and then I stand the fish up, and I curve it. If I'm going to do an S curve, I block it all up and try to do a little S curve. Take a lot of measurements. Then I put my pattern aside, and then I, I figure out what side of the fish is going to show. And then I cut through the back of the fish. And Oh, actually, I just happen to have a fish here. I'll be done. This is a little black sea bass which he's in the process, or she's in the process right now. So you can see where I cut this fish down the back, and then I come in with a little, you know, various little cutters that I have, little flat knives with serrated edges, and I come in and I scrape in between the skin and, and the meat, and I take out that body of meat, that backbone that I talked about, you know, they have a backbone that runs through the fish into the back of the head where the brain is, that has to be chiseled out and then I, then the fish is kind of, the skin is open. Then all this is attached by bone in here. There's a lot of bone in here, so that's a lot of picking, little pieces of, um, that has to be clipped. The bones have to be clipped down close to the skin. On the, I'm on the inside. And, and get in there and cut that bone. Before you can open up the skin, you have to do that. Then I take out all the meat out of here. And then the, the hardest part, especially on a big fish like this, I could probably spend, I've spent as much as six hours in a big head. Uh, fish's head because you have to get underneath the tongue up where the brain is and you, it, you have to go quite a ways in there so there's certain bone that you do leave because you want to keep the the um, you know the actual shape of the head so you know working in this direction and you're trying not to flap it around too much you know you come in there and you clean that out underneath the tongue in the head so once it's all scraped so that's called skinning and scraping the esophagus st stays in because that's basically a cartilage, you know, but you have to scrape it all off and get any meat off of it. So that's a, you know, it's kind of a big job to, to skin and scrape this. I could probably do this in about two and a half, three hours to get this all nice and cleaned out. You know, that's one, this is one process that you don't want to skimp at. You want to get all that stuff out of there. And a bass like that big one there. I would say it's a full day's work. Um, if it comes in fresh and I have time to work on it, then I'd rather do that. A lot of times people would ask for the fish back. So if I could return that body of fish, uh, fresh fish for them, so then, you know, they could mount their fish and eat it too. But if not, it goes into the freezer and then, you know, the fish is still edible. You know, my cats ate good and my neighbors ate good. So, you know, there's not much that goes to waste. So, so now at this point, you have it doesn't even look like a fish anymore. You know, I have the head, but everything, all the skin is just kind of hanging, and you know, there's no form to it. At that point, it gets put into a degreaser. Um, I use um, white Coleman fuel, and it can go in anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours for a fish this size. Or I could leave a fish like this in overnight. You know, eight, twelve hours. What do you put it in a pot? Or? Yeah, I have some big tubs. You know, you don't have to fill them up to the top, just enough to um, cover the fish. And the nice thing about that, that's the most toxic product that I use. And yet, I can use it over and over again. All the oil goes and sinks to the bottom. And then I can pour off the good gas, and then just I just have to get rid of, like on a fish like this, I might have a little half a cup, not even a half a cup of oil with a little gas mixed into it. So there's not a lot of, uh, you know, toxic waste uh, once it's been degreased, I put it in my tan. The tan basically is um, household products, borax, salt, glycerin, which is a product in soap. Um, I guess that's a softener. I use uh, that brown Lysol bacteria, you know, that kills the bacteria in it, um, and uh, zinc sulfate. 
and I, the zinc sulfate, I've seen it in aspirin. I always say that it's, you use that because you don't want your fish to get a headache. But I don't, I'm not quite sure what that is. It's some sort of a drying agent. So I mix that in a big tub of water, and then the fish gets soaked in the tan. And that can stay anywhere from, you know, a week. I've had fish, you know, in, in the tan for maybe more than two weeks when I haven't been able to get the bodies ready. But a bit fish this size, you want to leave it in at least a week. So it really gets saturated with the borax and the salt. And while it's in the tan, then I start making a body. I use this foam. It's a carving foam. Um, it's called dustless. Then with my patent, I do a lot of um, measuring and drawing lines on it. And I sit around. I cover it, cut it with a um, uh, fillet knife. You know, I do some carving, and uh, you know, once I get it to fit the fish, it's ready to. I put a piece of wood in it so that that can be screwed to the wall because you can't screw anything to the foam; it's too light. So I install a, that, and then um, I take my fish out of the tan, wash it off. You know, wash all the um, tan off of it. I've had a lot of employees. I could get them to skin and scrape, do uh, some of the finish work, some of the. Uh, fin work, even setting eyeballs and you know building up certain areas. But this was it's very really crucial when you're putting the fish on the body. If it's not right at that point, you can't ever correct it. You know, so that was something I always ended up doing by myself. But you wrap that wet skin around the um, around the body. I put a hide paste on it. It's this sticky stuff. It's sort of creamy, and then slip the foam into it. Use a lot of paper mache to fill in areas like the cheek meat that came out of here and the eyeballs and little places in the head where you can't get your foam. So I fill it with paper mache and then sew it up and, you know, get that as close as you can. I actually sculpt in scale so they won't even see this after when I'm, when I'm done.